That's a really uh, hard act to follow. It was great energy. Uh, I wish I could have heard it uh, for a lot longer. And um, what's really interesting is I'm in the gap. I live the gap every day. Um, so I, yeah, it was, it was great. Um, what I want to talk about today, which I think is a perfect segue, uh, maybe with a little bit less energy, is the keys to a successful uh, career in user experience. Um, when I was first thinking about uh, this keynote and what I wanted to do, and normally when I do a keynote, I want to go really um, big ideas and really inspire. And I thought I would take the opposite track here um, and go for really what I think is very practical, useful information, especially for anyone who's earlier, early in their uh, UX career. Uh, but I also want to kind of inspire, at least motivate um, all of you to kind of think about where you are in your career, um, where you want to head, and some concrete ideas about how to get there. So um, I'm the uh, director of the User Experience Center at Bentley University in the Boston area. And when I said I live the gap, our college, our university, uh, and our program is the gap. So we have a graduate program of about 150 graduate students in a program called Human Factors in Information Design. We're probably the largest UX graduate program in the US. Uh, we also have a certificate program in UX that we've been running for about the last 20 years or so. Um, and we have something called the UXC, which was my, my pride and joy, which is the User Experience Center. And it's really based on a teaching, um, a teaching hospital uh, uh, approach in that uh, we have students who are learning a lot of the theory in class, and then they're working in the center applying what they learn with real client projects. In our center, we have probably five to six companies we're working with at any one time. We've worked in our uh, 15 years, we've worked with over 200 companies around the world doing all different types of user experience, more in the research than the, than the design side. Um, but it's a fantastic model that really helps try to prepare students as they enter the workforce. We're also part of the Graduate School of Business at Bentley. Um, so there's a lot of business strategy kind of infused in what we, uh, in what we do as well. Um, so when I, when I first started thinking about this, of, well, why does it really matter about your career? What, what, does, what does it mean to have a successful career in UX? Well, Dan uh, Zook, uh, in the opening keynote, he was talking about sleepwalking versus sparkle, right? So personal satisfaction and happiness. How do we get from that sleepwalking stage to that sparkle stage? How do we advance our career, right? It gives us monetary security. And we also can contribute to this field. We're all part of it. Right? And it's important to give something back. And really, and we've heard a lot of this uh, throughout the, the, the conference so far, is UX making a big difference, making the world a little bit better. And each of us, I think, has a responsibility to do that. This is my motivation. This is a current group of uh, our graduate students. And there's nothing greater than um, I love doing all the consulting work. I do research. I teach. I publish, um, but these students are really the ones that motivate me to help them, to give them guidance. Um, and so all this is really coming from is a place of giving back and helping uh, the students have the type of career that they ultimately want. And when we think about career, or, or your career in UX, it's, it's really kind of a series of phases. And when I look back, when I first started, you know, I was just kind of learning some of the real basics. I wanted to learn some of the fundamentals around what are kind of the theoretical frameworks of how we work. We've talked about, you know, some of the things around cognitive psychology with Steve this morning and other things that really are the basis of what we do. And then it was the first job is really just about practicing and, and really just working hard and learning a ton. Um, and then as we kind of get into the early part of our career, we start to build confidence, right? We're starting to do new things. We start to feel more confident in what we do. And when we get into kind of the middle part of our career, 
it's really about demonstrating value to the organization we're working with, right? That's really where that value really starts to have that big impact. And then later in your career, it's, for a lot of people, it's about the big picture. It's drawing these connections. It's ties to business strategy and, and, and giving back and, and all this. And this is really important as kind of you think about the kind of the trajectory of your career. Now, um, just normally I don't do these like show of hands, but I'm really curious. How many of you consider yourself more on the um, design side of UX? Just a quick show of hands. Design side. Okay, quite a few. What about the research side? Okay, with those blinding lights, it seems like a very small. And what about kind of strategy? Oh, interesting. Okay, that's great. It's almost, it's definitely more design, but also kind of almost equally split between research and strategy. That's excellent. And so it, in this, this is, I don't mean to kind of put people in silos or in these buckets, um, but it's really important to think about kind of where you fit in and how you want to expand out and which ways. And I'll talk about in a few minutes kind of how important it is to um, um, kind of expand into these other areas uh, as your career evolves. So one of the first keys, and we've mentioned it was talked quite a bit uh, in the panel, is training, right? It's really important to learn from others. There's kind of a magic that happens in the classroom, whether it's in physically or virtually. There's academic programs. There's professional programs. There's certifications. There's online courses. They're popping up all over the place, right? I know there's some coming up here in India. There's also a lot of things online that people take. And it's really important to kind of have an opportunity to get some kind of training and specifically the ability to learn from other people. Continuing education. Always be learning. This has been absolutely true throughout my career. And I think it's a hallmark of somebody who's really devoted to the field is there's wonderful books and articles. I, I did a, 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 this is a little bit of a promotion slide. These are all books that have come out of uh, people who've worked at the Bentley University User Experience Center. Um, and then, of course, uh, one of the things that I do is I'm co-editor of the Journal of Usability Studies, which is a fantastic online free resource of some of the best peer-reviewed um, research related to uh, UX, UXPA journal.org as a promo. But always be learning, right? Always trying to be, um, look at what's out there. And there is absolutely no shortage of resources. Pick and choose different topics at different things as you need them. Networking. All of you know the importance of networking, but I, it has been so instrumental, not only in, in my professional career, but a lot of the students that have, uh, we've worked with. Go meet people. Just talk to people. The, the, the best parts of conferences, no, no offense to any of the speakers, myself included, but the best things is when we're outside next to that beautiful tree and talking to different people and learning from them, is go to UX events. Go to non-UX events where you're the only UX person there. It's eye-opening. For any of, any of you who are college students or very recently graduated, take advantage of informational interviews. Find somebody and say, hey, would it be okay if I just could have coffee or tea and I could ask you some questions about where you got where you, you know, how you got where you, where you are. And then there's a, a ton of different online communities, LinkedIn, et cetera. Projects. Not all projects are equal, okay? Now, a lot of you in your day-to-day -day work probably don't have the choice. You're sort of handed a project and you want to do it as best you can, which is great. But if you ever have the opportunity to steer yourself in this particular direction to do certain project work. Go for projects that are high profile, where senior management is really looking at it. It's high priority. Projects that could potentially have a really big impact, especially on the business. Have projects that, where you could calculate a return on an investment for the work that you do. So you can look like basically a hero with a, a great design, et cetera. Um, and then try to align yourself with great teams, people that are smart, are hardworking, and really fun to be with, right? Then it's not work anymore, right? 
You're just a bunch of people having a great time, and you happen to be doing uh, a lot of producing a lot of value for your organization. Expanding your experience. It's really important to look at your, your, uh, your expertise in a really wide variety. In other words, wear different hats. This is myself and a colleague, a Swedish guy, David, who is wearing his Viking hat. Um, and what we try to do is expand our expertise. If you're primarily on the design side, get some experience on the research side. Or dip your toe into some strategy work. Find people who are doing that and say, hey, would it be OK if I shadowed you for a day or a couple hours? Could I attend that meeting even though I'm not part of that project? I want to know what you do and how you do it. And why did you decide that? Right? Start to learn from other people. Use some new tools. There's a ton of new UX tools, both design and research. Use both qualitative and quantitative methods. I'm a quant person, but I deeply appreciate qualitative uh, methods as well. And I'm always trying to expand my, my toolkit, my set of skills. And then finally, is try to bring in or incorporate business data, right? Look, look at kind of the, the larger suite or, or uh, area of, of data that you can use as part of your job. Demonstrating value. This is hugely important in your career is ask yourself, how can I provide value to the organization? Am I providing value? Is there a way I can provide more value? Return on investment. Try to align with the business goals. So as you're building out new designs, et cetera, is see, how does this align with our business? Communicate that to management, right? If you're a researcher, use video clips. Use really important metrics, right? Look at the analytics. Communicate your value to the management. And then there's a lot of intangibles. Is you demonstrate your value. You know, one, one thing that makes a, a great athlete is he or she makes the people around them better, right? Think of the same thing with your own profession, right? Make your team better. Make your manager look great. Make the people that uh, work under you look like heroes. And, and a UX champion, try, if you can, to find um, a champion. Somebody outside of UX it, within your organization who can really support your team and you. A champion will reduce the friction. Things will just start to happen. You'll start getting more budget. Your projects will be higher prioritized, right? You'll have that institutional support, right? And it's very difficult, but in my personal life, I've had a few people um, who were really that champion who made things happen. They had access to the C-suite where you didn't, right? And, and you want to find somebody who really gets it. They don't get it because it's kind of the um, in vogue thing to, to do or to say, but they really truly believe it and really try to foster that relationship as best you can. Mentorship. Um, for any of you who have had, a, have had or have what you consider a mentor is hugely valuable in your career. Uh, this is actually a picture of me presenting the um, uh, UXPA Lifetime Achievement Award to Tom Tullis um, a few years ago in Atlanta. And um, Tom, for, for me, essentially was and is uh, a mentor. Um, we've written two books together. Uh, we co-teach together and have done a ton of other research together. And he's really, like a lot of good mentors, is kind of my compass, right? He's been a great guide to me as I've built my career. He's helped me with my technical skills. He's challenged me with my statistics and et cetera. Uh, he's also helped me with my soft skills about how to present, how to communicate to management, how to build relationships with other teams and really giving that kind of career guidance. And it's wonderful to have a mentor within your own organization, but you can also try to find a mentor outside your organization. So you can say, hey, listen, I'm not happy at my job right now. My boss isn't listening to me. What do you think I should do? Right? So it's really helpful to have somebody who's more senior to you, um, who's got a lot of experience, who can kind of help guide you in your career. 
Leadership. Um, anyone can be a leader. You don't need to be a manager. Is there's leadership opportunities all around us all the time. If you're early in your career, just start small. Look for something and when they ask for a volunteer, raise your hand and say, yeah, I'll, I'll take the lead on that. I can do that. Find those leadership opportunities. And if no one's yelling out, you can say, hey, I've got a good idea. Why don't I look into this, right? It, it's the thing that separates kind of people who see UX as a job versus a career. And I'm talking about a career that really matters. It's what we tell our graduate students, too, is look for those leadership opportunities and get feedback from other people, right? We call it 360 feedback, right? Get feedback from people that, that uh, somebody that you report to, who, uh, who report to you, and everybody around you. And be really open to that feedback and think of it as an iterative cycle, right? And try to set, for leadership, try to set an example. Be the kind of leader that you wish other people were. So really think about kind of what makes a great leader. Find your own style and go for it. Building relationships. This is, I think, one of the most important um, aspects of my own, um, that's helped me with my own career, is, is we talked about it, I think, on the first, first day, is UX is... It's about people. Your career is about people. I think UX of what we do is mostly about relationships. Yes, you need some research skills and design skills and some technical skills, etc. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, specifically building trust with um, the people around you, with your team, with other teams, with, within your organization, in providing that value. You have to have that trust. And it's great to have different perspectives, to see different perspectives and really understand them. You know, somebody was earlier talking about kind of being uh, empathic to people on your team, not just users and customers, but all of your kind of constituents or business sponsors. Learn from others. It's a hugely important part of the, these relationships. And making sure you're working towards a common goal. Never forget that. Always repeat, hey, listen. We're all on the same team here, right? We all want a successful product. We want a great design. We want the company to make crores, whatever it is. Just always think about wh what our goal is and remind people that you're all working together. Flexibility. This was actually the one, one slot. After I put all the ideas I had about how, how to have a great, you know, successful UX career, I thought, you know what? I think there's something missing. And this is kind of a little bit of a, a departure from some of these other ones. Is I've seen um, over the years, I've probably mentored quite close to 100 graduate students as they've entered into the workforce. And the, the students that seem to fare well have this certain quality around flexibility. Some, some students uh, that we see, or early professionals, have a very um, uh, kind of very strict approach to UX. They say, I was trained this way, this is the way we're going to do it, this is the way I was taught, end of story. But there has to be some flexibility in your approach. Go for incremental improvements. It's better to have some small improvements than nothing at all. Just think of that you're constantly moving the needle in the right direction, right? Go for incremental improvements. You don't have to have a perfect design right away. You need to be able to adapt on the spot. If a business sponsor says, hey, why don't we do this, or why don't we consider this, be very open to those ideas. Now, it's great you can, should hold your ground when you need to. right? You don't want to compromise your values, but try to be flexible in your approach. And publish and present. Um, this is, I think, really um, uh, very helpful for people that really want to kind of build out their career. And essentially, you want to dive into this, right? There are so many different opportunities to um, publish at, in online magazines, um, websites, academic journals. Uh, for example, the Journal of Usability Studies, we just launched our first ever uh, special student issue in August. Uh, had submissions from all around the world, um, just to try to encourage uh, students from 
to, to publish their work. Um, and also to present, go to conferences. We've seen a, a lot of uh, younger folks here uh, presenting their work. And, you know, I was told many years ago, my first talk, uh, I was so nervous. And a professor came to me and he said, if you do a great job, people will remember you. If you do a bad job, no one's going to remember you, so don't worry, you have nothing to lose, right? And that was really, really helpful. And I said, okay, I've got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go for it. And we tell our students to do the same thing. Just get up on stage and, and go for it. And, and the second point I want to make is, is go broad. Look at new perspectives. Don't just go to, again, it presented a UX conference, right? But go to something if you're in financial services or you're in uh, healthcare. Go to some of those conferences and share UX. It's a very, very new uh, concept for a lot of people. And volunteer. Um, it's really important to give back, especially as your career progresses. Um, one of the first things that um, happened to me in my UX career is I applied for a conference. And it was at the UXPA conference many, many years ago. And I got an email that said, congratulations, you've been accepted. And I said, oh, great. And I was all excited. And then about 15 minutes later, I got another email that said, I'm sorry, your paper was rejected. And I said, wait, I was just accepted. Now I've been rejected. And what's going on? So I contacted and I said, what is it? You know? And they said, no, 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 you're accepted. We're, we're very sorry, but um, uh, you know, we're all volunteers. And we make mistakes. And the system wasn't working right. But don't worry, you're in. We're looking forward to your paper. And I was sort of grumbling. She goes, you know what? If you, if you want, you, you should actually help us out. You know, Instead of complaining, you help us out and you become a volunteer. I ended up being on the uh, conference committee for seven years at uh, the UXPA because of that, and met incredible people and really established my network. Um, so I highly recommend you find opportunities to volunteer. Find the organization that you really believe in. And don't wait. Just do it, even if it's for you know, a few hours a month. And um, the last slide I have is I saved it for the last because in, in some ways probably the most important. Is, is find your passion. Uh, this, this slide uh, was from uh, some research we did with a client on home kidney dialysis machines. And we were out in the field, and, and this is somebody on my team talking to this uh, dialysis um, patient about it. And one thing is, is UX has the power to change lives. It has the power to save lives, right? and really make a difference. And find the thing that you care about, right? Do you love, you want to make you know, healthcare your thing? Or do you want to really um, help disadvantaged communities? Find something that you really care about. Find that kind of intrinsic motivation to make the world a little bit better, right? And let that try to come through in your career. Now, you might be very lucky and have that as part of your day-to-day -day job. Or you might not. But find those organizations or places where you can let your passion for UX and, and your um, kind of motivation kind of shine through. And there's definitely opportunities um, because this career is growing um, so much. So that's all I have. I hope it was very useful.